Hello friends, my name is Scott Lloyd and I'm honored to serve here at OBU as a professor of communication studies and coach of debate. And today I'm thankful for the opportunity to come to you and speak to you in these unusual times. But I'm reminded of the promise of the Word of God in Psalm 46 and 1. The Bible tells us that God is a very present help in the time of trouble. And I really appreciate the wording of that psalm, that God is a very present help, a very present help. I know that many times we can look back on our lives and we can see that God has certainly come through for us in the past, and that's a wonderful thing. And all of us look to the hope for God to intervene in our future and to be a blessing in our future. But the psalmist writes that God is a very present help. And I can't think of a more comforting word, especially in these difficult and challenging times. And I just want to encourage all of us today that the Lord is our strength, that He is our refuge, and that He is with us in this moment. And I'm reminded that Jesus was a wonderful example of this. He left the splendor of heaven as the Son of God, and He entered into our circumstance. He entered into our situation, and He loved us, and He embraced us, and He lived among us. And I think Jesus is a great example of how we should live our lives. Of course, He is our perfect example of entering into the world and sharing good news with those that are lost and those that are hurting. In fact, the Bible tells us that Jesus said of Himself, I have come to seek and to save that which was lost. He didn't hang out with the privileged. He didn't hang out with the religious. But we see in the example of Jesus Christ on the earth that he sought out those that were marginalized, those that were pushed aside by society. And he was someone that was willing to go. So in a very real sense, Jesus was a perfect example of what we should be, missionaries to our culture, missionaries to our society to share the good news that they are loved and that in Christ they can be forgiven, that they can be made whole. And this is a wonderful opportunity that all of us have in this community to come together and to remember that not only are we receiving training for whatever our vocation might be, but we are receiving a great opportunity to express our faith and to impact the culture and society around us with the message of Jesus Christ. You know, it's interesting to me as we look at the life of Christ and we explore how he lived his life. In fact, the gospel is the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if we focus specifically on his life and how he conducted himself during his earthly ministry, we see that Jesus specifically and on purpose went into areas that everybody else would avoid. In fact, in Matthew chapter 9, Jesus was accused of being a friend of sinners. The religious leaders would ask the disciples, why does your master hang out with tax collectors? and with sinners, people that were considered traitors to their country, women of ill repute, people that no one else wanted to be around. Jesus was around them. And not only was he around them, but he loved them and he cherished them. He hung out with them. And so if we're to be like Jesus, how much more in the day and age that we live should we reach out to those that are around us Specifically, those that society says, I don't want to have anything to do with them. Those that are marginalized and that are pushed aside. Jesus, in his example, tells us to go and to love others and to share with them the good news of this gospel. Jesus famously responded to those that were accusing him, rightly so, of being a friend of sinners. He said in Matthew chapter 9, it's not the, those that are well that need a physician, but it's those that are sick. Those that are hurting are the ones that are in need of a doctor. And Jesus was willing to go to them. He was willing to love them. He was willing to embrace them. 
How much more should you and I, who are followers of Jesus, follow in his example and love others and share with them the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus lived, that he died, and that he rose again. That is the message that we should deliver in this moment. That is the message that we should be delivering in this hour. You know, I'm struck by the fact that it seems that what Jesus commanded the most, so often we are willing to engage in the least. What Jesus modeled the most, we are least willing to be obedient to. And that is the command to go and to share the good news of the gospel with those that are around us. And the good news of the gospel should be heard in our words as well as our actions. So we open our mouth and we speak the words of life. We share what God has put in our hearts and in our lives that's contained in his word. I'm reminded of what the apostle wrote in Ephesians chapter 4, where he said, Don't allow any unwholesome words come out of your mouth, but let everything be said in a way that builds others up and encourages them that those that hear your words might receive grace. So I wonder today as we examine our lives, as we go to those that are around us, are we communicating the grace of God in our words? Are we saying things that give life and give hope and give help to those that are around us? But not only should the Word of God be communicated in our words, but it should be communicated in our actions as well. The writer of the book of Hebrews in chapter 13 talks about us not neglecting to show hospitality. What does it mean to show hospitality? certainly means to welcome people into your home, but I think in our culture it goes beyond that. I think we should be willing to reach across to those that are hurting and to those that are despised, to those that are different than us, and make them feel welcome in our lives. There's a huge difference in affinity and community. And so often we are building, uh, we are building circles of affinity, And affinity means simply hanging out with those that are like you. They share your interest. They look like you. They think like you. They talk like you. And affinity is a wonderful thing, but it's not community. And if we look at Jesus and we know that he was God, he was the son of God, who did he hang out with? Who did he reach out to in his earthly ministry? On purpose, he went to those that were very different than he was. In fact, they were so different that they were shunned by the rest of society. The Pharisees and the religious leaders of the day said, we don't want to have anything to do with these people. But those were the very people that Jesus went to and he loved them and he blessed them and he healed them and he forgave them. So Jesus wasn't interested in making just another circle of affinity, but he was interested in in building a community which is marked by diversity, people that are different than us, people that behave different than us. He reached out to them and he loved them and so should we. In uh, January of 2018, I was privileged to to, uh, be a part of a go trip to Toronto, Canada. And I, I remember the great diversity of that city. And one afternoon we were invited into the home of a couple that was serving the diverse community there in Toronto, and they served us a meal, and they told us about their ministry, and at the end of the meal, I was complimentary of our host, and I remember turning to that dear wife and and saying to her, thank you so much for the meal and uh, your wonderful hospitality. In fact, I said thank you because I believe you have the gift of hospitality. No sooner had the words left my mouth that she corrected me very quickly. It's not a gift it's a command. Hospitality, it's not a gift, it's a command. And I was taught something very wonderful in that moment, that all of us, regardless of whether or not we think we have a gift or whether or not we think we have a certain ability to do something, 
all of us as Christians are commanded to show hospitality to those that are around us. We are called to go. We are called to share the gospel. You know, so many times we get caught up with this, this idea that, oh, I didn't hear God speak to me, and I don't know if I'm qualified. I don't know if I'm called. I don't have a certain talent. I don't have a certain ability. And in hanging out with students here at OBU, I know that a lot of times students um, really get hung up on this idea of, I need to have God speak to me and to tell me specifically where He wants me to go and what He wants me to do. And uh, no doubt, God may do that for some of you. But for a lot of us, we already have God's command, and it's in the Word of God. It's in the Bible. God tells us what to do. He tells us to share our faith. He tells us to love others. He tells us to, to reach out to those who are marginalized, to those who are pushed aside by the rest of society. But I wonder how many times are we disobeying what God has asked us to do because we're waiting for a specific command. We're waiting for a specific word. I'm reminded of a, a story that I heard uh, that Andy Stanley, a uh, pastor in Atlanta, told about an interaction that he had with his father on uh, one time where you know his dad was talking about the call that he had received into pastoral ministry. And Andy was fascinated with this call that, that his dad had received and that many of his peers had received as well. And Andy turned to his dad and said, Dad, that's great that you received that call, but can I just volunteer? Sometimes we wait for this specific call and it never comes. But if you see a need, if you see somebody around you that's hurting, if you see someone around you that's lost, if you see somebody around you that needs to hear the message of the gospel, there's nothing that stops you from volunteering, from stepping up and saying, you know what, I'm going to be that person that serves others. I'm going to be that person that blesses others. I'm going to be that person that helps others. And in that moment, when you volunteer, you are stepping forward to serve the needs of those that are around you, to be a blessing and a strength to them. And in this time of great challenge for our community, for our state, and for our nation, what a great opportunity to serve others with the light and the salt of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are you speaking that message with your words? Are you living that out in your actions? Are you representing Jesus well? This past January, I went to the Amazon in Brazil and uh, we hiked out into the jungle and uh, we spent three days uh, out there in the jungle, and, and it was a wonderful, wonderful experience, something that I'll, I'll never forget. Uh, but I recall specifically the first night that we were there, and we were around the fire, and we were speaking through the translator to our guides, and we were sharing the message of the gospel. And I remember asking them what it was that challenged them, and if, if they could have one thing granted for their people and for their country, what would it be? And there was a 19-year-old, there was a gentleman that was there that was about my age uh, in his late 40s, and then there was a man in his middle 60s, and each one of them talked about a desire uh, on their part for equality, to be treated as equals in their nation, because for so long they had been mistreated, and their resources had been robbed of them by others in power. And it was a, a beautiful time that we had together. And it was a beautiful opportunity for us to speak up after they had shared about this desire for equality, to talk about a desire of Jesus to speak to every culture and every person, no matter where they're at or where they're coming from, and to share with them a freedom of equality, that God is no respecter of persons, and He came into this world to share the message of the gospel with all of us. And that message transcends class. That message transcends political persuasion. That message transcends color. That message transcends boundaries. 
And the message of the gospel makes a difference in the hearts and lives of all people around the world. So as I conclude today, I want to challenge you once again. Jesus gave us a command, and he also gave us an example to go into all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature, to make disciples. So are you taking opportunity today to do exactly that? And if you're waiting on a specific call, you've got it. The need is the call. You can step up and you can volunteer to go and to be the person that God will use in this moment. Let me pray for us. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to come together. And Lord, even though all of us are facing difficult challenges today, even though our community and our state and our nation is facing challenges, I know that you can be a very present help in trouble and that today you would bring comfort and peace to all of those that are listening to this message. And I pray, dear Lord, that you would set a fire in our hearts, a fire to deliver the message of the gospel to those that are around us, to not wait for a specific call or a specific word, even though no doubt that can and may come in our lives. But Lord, you have given us a specific word in the gospel. You lived it out through your life, through your death, through your resurrection, that now all those that place faith in your name can become the sons and the daughters of God. Help us to deliver that message. Help us to share that message in faith and in obedience and to be the people that you have called us to be. Thank you for this opportunity to share the gospel. Thank you for this opportunity to go and may all of us be willing to step up and to do and to be in our words and in our actions everything that you've commanded us to be. We ask this all in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you all, friends. It's been my joy to be with you today. May God continue to bless you and to help you and to keep you. And may we all step up and go as God directs, knowing that we don't have to wait for a specific word, but we can simply say yes to the word we've already been given. God bless you.